Hi everybody, Mike Levin here, Genuine Trading. I want to go over uh, this week's um, action in the market. We had a really interesting week. We had mostly up for the week until Friday with the jobs numbers, even though they were good. The market pulled in just a little bit. Um, Apple surprisingly has been pulling back. It's already off uh, 50 points from its high. Rumors of uh, a strike at their uh, China plant proved to be unfounded, but uh, still nonetheless knocked the uh, stock back uh, a little bit. It had a really nice rally. Um, if you were to look at um, look at it uh, from the lows, from the uh, the 652 level on um, um, on Friday, it went from 652 all the way up to a 660. But um, I would have to say that the the rally that it had on um, on Tuesday where it got down as low as uh, 650 and then closed all the way up at 661 I thought that was pretty good too so Apple's been pulling in here it's not one of the major stocks I've been following right now although how could you not follow Apple but um, I don't have a position in it um, I did have a position short but I did cover it and it's one of those things where you wish you there weren't any stops sometimes <laughs> because I, I would have been right, but again, you know, invariably though, sometimes when they're not stops, that's when you really get hurt too. So, um, going over the positions that we have in the market, I'm going to go to our portfolio here. The only thing I think I would have to add is we added Amarin this week is the new one that we added. I added that on Friday. I got lucky to uh, put my price point in at twelve and a quarter, and uh, we opened up in came in a little bit and filled that. So um, Amarin is, is a company that has a, a new drug coming out. And the CIPTA, I'm probably not pronouncing it right, that is um, made from fish oil. A lot of people are poo-pooing this, figuring that, you know, the Lebeza drug that, uh, Lebeza drug that uh, GlaxoSmithKline has, it's actually approaching a billion dollars in sales. So this, you can't really poo-poo something that's selling you know, about a billion dollars worth of this drug. And supposedly, Amarin's drug works better with less side effects. And if you look at this over the past uh, couple of years, the company's really coming from very, you know, low levels, rallied all the way up, it's pulled back after the uh, the FDA approval. And now um, they're in a quiet period right now. A lot of people think um, that they're in a quiet period because they're negotiating um, with potential partner. Rumors are GlaxoSmithKline wanting to, you know, keep their franchise in the fish oil area might uh, pick up Amarin. And rumor also of AstraZeneca as another uh, particular su potential suitor. And they're saying that price points should be in the mid-20s. Um, even J.P. Morgan came out with some uh, talk that even without a takeover on a cash flow adjusted basis, if they were out there really selling this drug in a year or so, they think this would be worth north of 30. So. I kind of done, uh, did a lot of research looking at uh, online. I like to look at SeekingAlpha.com, www. As you can see, SeekingAlpha.com is one of my favorite um, spots whenever I do research. Just click in here, type in your symbol, A-M-R-N, and you'll see some really good articles of Seeking Alpha um, authors about staying long, staying strong, likely buyout candidate, Good entry point ahead of major news next month. So um, this is my number one new pick that you might say right now um, at 12 and a quarter. My target literally is going to be new highs of around 21 plus. I've, I've been involved in other companies that have had deals done. Um, and that, that's what I, I say. I think this that's what's going to happen. So um, taking a look at our positions, the only newest one that we haven't picked is Ameren. So now that we have it here, and now that we've added it to our portfolio, let's uh, let's start from uh, the beginning here, and let's look at uh, Amazon. Have a nice short on Amazon. Unfortunately, um, I let the short work well, and I did not cover it, and it came right back. Um, our short is at 259.30. Right now it's at 258.40, but we had a nice little double bottom in here that it held. I'd like to see what happens in that third time down if it holds in that area. If it does hold in this area again, I'm probably going to cover my short. But um, if not, if we do get some sort of respite, some sort of break in uh, these rally in the gains, I think Amazon comes down into the 230 level. So I'm still going to hold on to that one. 
uh, A&R, again, love A&R. We started getting into it at seven and a quarter as it's sort of coming in um, from the, the rally that it had from these the, the low five area. And we take a look at a Fibonacci retracement level. It actually got a little, little lower than I thought it would. Right now we're at roughly at a 62% retracement level. Um, I like to see this rally up probably up into the $8 level. I, if I time my... Um, my buy a little bit better, we would have had a better gain on this when we choose to get out. Arena, uh, I still like Arena. Arena's really been uh, riding this trend line as well on the way up, coming to flat top area right up in this area. I think we break out again and run to the 1011 area. Uh, Vivas uh, with their drug as well as uh, Orexigen, they have their you know obesity and diabetes related drugs. Uh, Arena supposedly is the safest out there. so. I think that uh, if people are going to go look for these things, I think they're going to go for the safety uh, content first rather than just the strongest efficacy because there could be problems there. So I'm still holding on. We've got a higher price point. Um, if we get back to even, which is what my target is initially here, I'm going to get out and then wait for a retrace. Um, I did not heed the warnings to get out in this area, which I really should have. Deck, I got out of deck uh, at 3660. It started to run, but acted started looking like pardon me, it started looking like crap on Friday. And as it was falling, I decided to hit the bid and, and get out. Um, I didn't like how this was falling in here, so we got out of 3660 area. Made just a brief, uh, tiny profit. I'll just call it a break even. Dendrion still liking Dendrion in here. This is holding at these levels. Um, and again, I've mentioned in the past that Celgene. Um, has been a potential suitor. I've had other people argue with me that LG wouldn't be. So honestly, I don't know who's going to be a suitor or if there's going to be a suitor. I just think that uh, as Dendron is getting uh, Prevenge getting coverage, as they're getting closer to perhaps having this be approved in Europe, um, I just think that this is still a decent area to be holding or even initiating new positions. Uh, my target on, on this from the 450 area would be, hang on a second, I'd like to see it come up to this initial gap. So if we can get back up, um, we've got two different gap areas. I would say um, here it is in here. I can take this back. I think if we got up to the six, six and a quarter area, I would take my first uh, profits from here, or I would take a small loss because we're in it roughly around seven. Um, but if I see anything with real big spike potential rather than the slow and steady, I'm going to hold on because there is potential for, for deal. OCC is going to be reporting earnings this Wednesday um, with their uh, CEO and president resigning. I don't know if the earnings are going to be that good, uh, but apparently he was the one that stepped in the way of a potential deal between Seagate and OCZ. Uh, that has not been verified by anyone, but it, you know it's the quote-unquote word on the street. I think the stock has gotten so cheap that um, I think a lot of the negativity is priced in. You get a very high short position. I just, for some reason, I think we gap up and fill this gap, and we actually run into the mid fives again. Um, the options premiums are crazy for this. Um, if we take a look at add OCZ, you're looking at premiums um, for the October options in the 180, 150 area. That's just nuts. The October fours are ten cents, twenty cents. That might not seem a lot to spend. But the stock's at three sixteen with two weeks to go. Uh, November fours, no, November threes. Right now, you got to pay sixty five cents. You're paying like forty five cents premium. It's kind of a lot, but um, there is potential for a takeout here. So, I'd like to own the stock, keep the stock. If it pops, sell the options against it. We could do really good buy, buy and write. So that's what I would say, uh, particularly with that one there. Uh, research and motion, we got into this when this had spiked up the first time. Uh, we're in the 790 area. Um, we're holding it nicely. It's actually doing one of these movements that I actually think the shorts are going to get squeezed. Uh, we're very near covering um, this particular gap box down. So I think we can get up into the 9 area. If you look at a long-term declining trend here, trend line. Wouldn't be surprised to see this hit eight and a half to nine up in the nine area. I, I probably sell up into that or sell some options against the position. Uh, Rosetta Genomics, um, my target is still very high. We had a nice little run up in here. Now it's pulled back. I still think Rosetta is nice in this area to initiate new positions. 
Um, I initially got in at 450 at 548, got in again at 615. The net is 585, just barely above where we're at right now. Sohu, I continue to love Sohu. Uh, this company on all the different metrics is really uh, doing very, very well in the video content, search content. Um, in the Asian markets, they're, they're doing very, very well. I think they're a takeover target. Even Citron Research, a company that loves to write out bearish articles and loves to short sell stocks, they think this is worth at least 90. So um, I would be an owner of uh, Sohu here. I'm already an owner of some of the options, the October 45s. We went a little bit too tight and did not take our profits off the table when we had them. And now we've come down and uh, they're bid 1020. Any rally with these where we get a good portion of our money back, I would take it. And I am looking to establish some November positions um, in Sohu. Um, we're also going to get, I believe right now, we're in the merger and acquisition uh, season, the October-November area. If there are going to be deals done that companies like to get done ahead of the year, it's closing for tax region, reasons. reasons. <laughs> um, I would take, there's a lot of stocks I would look at for that. Uh, Sohu, I'm not saying it is a takeover target, but um, it is pretty cheap in here. Moving on to um, uh, Sippy. Spectrum Pharmaceuticals, love, love, love this company. Um, not only do they have two really good drugs on the oncology side that have been fueling their earnings, the stock selling for roughly 10 times earnings for this year, I mean for next year. Uh, they had picked up another company, got another drug, and uh, one of their other drugs, um, there was a premature announcement by one of the partners of some good news. Uh, Spectrum did the right thing and talked it down and said they're going to wait for a little bit more for the FDA. Very unusual for management to do that. Very smart of management to do that. And um, this is a company I continue to think has at least 50% gains over the next three to six months ahead of it. It's also a takeover target as well. Travel Zoo, as, as you can see, Travel Zoo has just been holding in here. I like this reverse head and shoulders action in here. Um, the company have put the, not put themselves up for sale, but in this area in here, I said that they want to maximize shareholder value. Uh, it's just been holding in, uh, not necessarily running to new highs, but earnings are going to be coming out soon. Wouldn't be surprised to see the stock take another run up on earnings. And if there is a deal, I'd say you're looking at something in the low 30s. Uh, 32 is my target. Ringo, this is a great little one. Ringo, we got in recently at 330 pulled into the 3 uh, 290 area, and then popped up in two days to the 555 area. Um, on Friday, they announced that before the market opened, they did a secondary offering of 10 million shares, but they did it with only five institutional players um, at $4.35. So they gave someone a deal to get in, but um, I think they're going to hold the shares close to the best. This is why the stock didn't really come down as much. Um, and again, this is going to help them give ammunition uh, for the litigation that they're doing amongst many companies. Uh, namely Google being the, the main one. Um, this company I still think has doubling potential. I wrote the $6 calls against this position, so um, my net cost was, is three thirty. but when I wrote these $6 calls, I got $0.25 cents for them, so it lowers my net cost to three oh five. I'm agreeing to sell at 6 if it gets there within the next two weeks. If that does, that's a 93% gain. If it doesn't, it lowers my cost to three oh five. At today's level at 454, I'm still up over 50% on our money. Very, very good trade. Walter Energy, again, this is one we've been holding against our position. I still continue to think the Walter Energy and the coal space, um, although it's been, uh, it was the darling in, in a couple of years gone by, it's been the dog, the goat, whatever you want to call it this year, the ass, if you will, or donkey. Um, I, I'd say this is a great time to be accumulating stocks like Walter Energy, like BTU. Um, buy them here, and um, I'm literally going to work this around and um, work Walter and do an option play really soon on Walter, and we're going to average our cost down into the mid-30s. Uh, lastly, U.S. Steel. Again, we've done very well by buying U.S. Steel, writing options against it. Um, I think that we're going to see U.S. Steel get up into the 21 level. I'm going to write some more calls against it, lowering our cost from 1885. Hopefully, we're going to get one of those two-day pops that I sell into it like we did before, and I'm going to lower my cost to the low 18s, agreeing to sell at 21. Um, again, liking to make that, that roughly that 20% gain. The only other position we have, uh, LCC, uh, which is uh, the U.S. Airways. I sold some of the, uh, the 12 calls, October 12 calls, 
lowering our cost now to the um, to roughly the 1010 area or green to sell at 12. So with the stock at 1166, we're doing pretty good there as well. So uh, just reminding you, Genuine Trading is the website. Uh, go here, go to where it says start here, and that'll tell you a lot of what to do on our website. Uh, we're going to be adding a lot of webinars this coming month. Uh, this is going to be automated trading systems, as well as we're going to be doing the webinar for Mohan's Boomerang Trader System. So if you are a discretionary trader, uh, the Boomerang System will filter out most of the futures markets, the Russell, the, the, the S&P, the NASDAQ, even oil, and even the euro to find really good turning points there. So if you like to trade with the market, if you like to short against the market, um, having the Boomerang Trader System involved in your decision process is going to be really, really good because it's going to give you that edge. Um, and as well as if you're trading a lot of money in the market, sometimes taking some of that money off the table, letting an automated trading system um, do some of the heavy lifting is really, really smart. Uh, one trader I know that went from trading a quarter million dollars of his money down to 100000 because he took 150 off the table and put in a portfolio of seven different trading systems. Now, these trading systems aren't geared to make two, three, four hundred percent per year. It's how some traders can do that because if you are a good trader, you can make that on your invested capital or your leveraged capital. Automated trading systems, really good systems, have been averaging in that 40 to 80 percent range. Um, nothing is, you know, guaranteed. Past performance isn't necessarily an indicator of future success. But if you don't have good past performance in automated systems, you don't put your money in them. So I'm really, really good in that area. I'm considered an expert in automated trading systems. Um, I really believe that portfolios of automated systems are a great way to build wealth over time. You know, and if you've ever drank a good bottle of scotch, you know, it sometimes takes 7 to 12 years to get it to where it is. And if you start looking long term, like really taking that, that 4, 5, 6, 7 year view, automated trading systems as they're compounding your money, I think are a great way to go. Just like uh, wealthy investors from real estate or someone that's been building a business for many years, sometimes when you build a business, you've got to really be focusing on that long term and doing the right thing. That's what automated trading systems do for a good portion of smart portfolios. So, uh, again, sign up under our member sign up. Go to the bottom here where it says to sign up, and I'll be in touch with you on it. I don't like to send a lot of emails out. <clears throat> so right now, I've only been averaging one per month when I send out the newsletter. I'm going to probably move that up to two or three per month, but it's only going to be informational stuff for you and maybe some free products. Um, we're not pushing. We're not salesy here. Um, definitely sign up for uh, my Twitter feeds under Stock Twits or under, um, I mean, under Prosperous Guy, or you can go to Stock Twits, and under Stock Twits, it's under Walk and Talking, because I do, I do, because of a walk and fascination. It's hard not to do it once in a while when you get in the mood, but you know, then other times, you know, just doing that, it's it kind of crazy. But um, just sign up, go there. I'm under walking, talking. As you can see, how I'm signing up here. I'm going to put in my password that you can't see, but a lot of the pics you'll see will be similar to what I've done for Prosperous Guy. But then every once in a while, I'll also do the uh, the videos. So um. So that's basically about it. Mike Levin, uh, wishing you guys a good trading week. Keep your eye on Ameren. Really, really like that one. And um, all the best in trading. All right. Take care.